All right, so looking at reduction formula, so let's look at some examples of using reduction formula. Suppose I have an example, I've got um, sine of 200 degrees, and I want to reduce it into sine of some angle, which is between zero degrees and 90 degrees, all right? Some acute angle between zero degrees and 90 degrees. So how do I do that? I know that by the sine graph, if I have 200 degrees, it's actually gonna lie around here somewhere, let's say. And if I plot, go down 200, I know it's gonna end up somewhere, let's say over there. Then I could possibly end up with an acute angle at this point of here, that angle over there. And that will be the only acute angle because that's 90 degrees over there, that's negative 90. So if I keep this y value the same, I know that I'll end up with a negative angle, which will end up in that quadrant. Or I could put a negative in front of sine, which would create that. Now, reduction formula is both in the cost rule. So we go to CAST, 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. And if I want to find sine of 200 degrees, I want to find this is 270, 200 degrees is going to lie somewhere over here. All right, because it's 180 plus 20 degrees over there. Okay, so I can write this as 180 plus 20 degrees. And now I've extracted, I've extracted an acute angle. Okay, so that's acute between 0 and 90. Now did I have that acute angle? The next thing is, I can reduce this by removing the 180 and writing it as sine 20. But sine 20 will give me that over there, which is, um, let's say I put it on the calculator, right? So I type sine 20 and I get 0 0.34, like that, okay? I need to get this number here, which is gonna actually give me negative 0 0.34, which means if I put a negative in front of this, I would end up with negative 0 0.34. And if I do that, I will end up over here, which means that if I take sine of negative 20, for example, you'll notice it's equal to negative 0 0.34. So this angle over here is negative 20 degrees, which is exactly the same by symmetry on the other side. So I can rewrite this going back now, taking all the way back one step there. So we got 180 degrees plus 20 degrees. We remove the 180. And we're saying that this is an acute angle. So this is equal to sine 20. And using the cost rule, all my trigonometric functions are positive in the first quadrant. Only sine is positive in the first quadrant. Cos is negative and tan is negative. Sine is negative and cos is negative in the tan quadrant. Tan is positive. Cos is positive in this quadrant. And sine is negative and tan is negative. So sine 180 plus 20 lands in this quadrant, which means I have a negative sine. Therefore, I put a negative in front of that. What am I actually saying? I'm saying that, simply put, I have changed sine 200 degrees into negative sine 20. These two will get the same answer. They have the same value. And that value is equal to negative 0 0.34. So what have I done? Even though I put a negative in front of the sine, I've reduced the angle to that. Okay, now let's do another one. Let's go through another one quickly. All right, so here we go. I got cos 
of 200 degrees. Question one, question two, I've got 10 of 300 degrees. I want to reduce all of these to an acute angle. I've got sine of 150 degrees, and I've got my quickly drawn cost diagram over here, where all is positive, sine is positive, 10 is positive, and cos is positive in that quadrant, zero, 90, quickly whipping it up for myself to use. And now I need to spot which quadrant it is it lies in so 200 degrees is going to lie from zero it's going to end up in the 10 quadrant so that's going to be become a negative because cos is negative in that quadrant so that's going to end up as a negative because cos is negative in that quadrant only 10 is positive and then i write it as cos 180 plus 20 degrees then i remove the 180 in the next step and that gives me negative cos 20 degrees which is the equivalent of cos 200 okay let's do sine let's do tan 300 tan 300 180 70, 300 will end up in this quadrant cos is positive so this is going to be negative and to write this angle down i know that using 180 and 360, I don't have to worry about changing the sign. And that's another rule. We always try our best to use 180 or 360 because it makes our life easier. We don't have to change cause we keep it the same. The moment I put 270 in here or 90 plus whatever angle. So for example, 270 minus 70 will give you 200 or 90 plus 110, but that doesn't matter because that's going to be greater than 90 degrees. The moment I got 270 minus 70, then cos will become sine. And that's a co-function rule. So anyway, I'm going to jump straight into this one. It's going to be 10, 360 minus 60, which means that that angle is going to be this way. And this way is positive, down is negative. So I've now minus it from there, leaving with negative 10, 60 degrees as the equivalent reduced angle. All right, let's look at the last one now. Sine, aim for 180. How do you go from 180 to 150? Minus 30. Where would you end up? This one ends up in the sine quadrant. All right, so that's 180 minus 30. So going back 30 like that. And that becomes positive sine 30 would be the equivalent of this. And just quickly looking at the diagram, remember this is... This can be seen because the moment you go to 30 degrees, its equivalent will be 150 with the same y value. So that is equivalent to each other, just the one is reduced from the other.